Okay, Eric, you play, you played and beat the team captain of the women's team today. Pretty good day for you. Tell us something That's right. about it. Yeah, um, I felt like I played a relatively clean game. I had a really tough loss yesterday, and uh, coming into this game, I was feeling tired and a little bit lethargic. So, um, but once the game got going, I, I was uh, kind of got the swing of things and got a good position from the opening and got a pretty substantial advantage from uh, pretty early on in the game. So I was happy to convert for a win. Yeah, and it looked pretty smooth, this game today. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's not easy to play smooth games. Um, this field has been really, really tough. And I've realized from playing against such strong players is if you make one mistake, they'll just pounce on you. So really had to try and minimize mistakes and was able to mm -hmm. do that today. Some tough games out there today. All the games seem to be going the distance. What do you think of the match? Yeah, um, I was so focused on my own game that I really didn't have so much time to look at everyone else's games. But I did glance at some of the positions and saw some really exciting fighting chess. So I do look forward to kind of going back and looking at what happened in other games. Okay, let's have a look at the game. Okay. Okay, Eric, let's have a look at your game. Yeah, uh, so I played Pia Kramling um, and this is one of the openings I was expecting, this kind of queen's gambit declined, bishop g5 is kind of a trendy move order. And most of the time, at least in my past games, I played bishop to e7. Mm -hmm. But this morning I prepared a bit more confrontational move, d takes e4, mm -hmm. which is kind of a delayed queen's gambit accepted. Yeah. Um, and it leads to some interesting lines. Uh, she played very solidly, queen a4, knight d7. And then e3, bishop e7, one back the pawn, castling. I had this position on my computer screen uh, this morning. Okay. Um, I knew it was, uh, it was very playable for both sides. Um, I was more prepared for bishop to e2, but queen c2, of course, is a, a move as well. And uh, yeah, usually the, the plan for black in these positions is to expand on the queen side and solve the problem yeah. of the light squared bishop. So I started with c5. Yep. Good old Fred Reinfeld move from way back. Yeah, very, uh, very thematic. Uh, she took. Yeah. And then I have a decision to make because I could take with knight, which looks very natural. But I figured if I play queen a5 after knight c3, queen takes c5, I get some initiative uh, against the bishop. And then I'm also pressuring the bishop on g5. Mm -hmm. So there's ideas of b6, bishop b7, and start, uh, start making threats before white can castle. So, so she played bishop d3. Yep, I played b6. And uh, then she played a3, which I was not, uh, not even considering, but it's interesting because she wants to play b4 and, uh, and kick away my queen. Yeah, yeah, but, which, where's the queen going? Uh, yeah, so I still have some squares, yeah, but... Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so bishop b7. Yeah. B4, when you go back to C7. Queen C7, and then she played rook to C1. Uh, and then this allowed me this uh, kind of positional transformation after take on F3, mm -hmm. take on F3, and then knight E5. And all of a sudden, um, like even though I gave up the bishop pair, white is under a lot of pressure here, I think, just with the bishop on D3, undefended pawn on F3, and the king still in the center as well. Yes, exactly. so kind of an easy game, haven't you, really? Um, yeah, I, I was feeling very comfortable yeah, here, yeah. and it's, it's white that has to answer the questions. And she decided so, to take on f6. Yeah, so this exactly. kind of simplifies a lot. Um, idea being, I have to throw in this in-between move to take, so I don't yeah. lose h7. Intermezzo move, and bishop takes f6. Yeah. And yeah, visually it looks very nice for black, uh, bishop versus knight, better pawn structure for, for black, and... Uh, and white probably wants to castle here, but if she castles, I believe I have the move uh, rook, uh, what was it? Attack the queen? There, there is a question which rook to which move rook? To, uh, to f8, because if I play this rook to, or to d8, yeah. then she has knight d5. And I want to uh, take, course, but after yeah. takes, my rook is hit. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. if we just back up a few moves, yep, yep. it's better uh, to move okay. the other rook. The other rook. And uh, then knight d5 yeah. doesn't work because doesn't work. after takes, takes, I take on c1. And there's no loose and rook in on Everything's covered and I'll be up a piece. Mm -hmm. So that's basically why she can't castle. 
and she played uh, Kingi 2. Kingi 2. Which uh, during the game, I thought to myself, uh, this is a delayed bong cloud. If you, <laughs> you've heard of this opening. I have. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so I think it, it probably, the position calls for Kingi 2, but it's not the most attractive move to play. No. It and looks safe enough, though, doesn't it? I mean, you could argue maybe the other way getting your king nearer the center for the end game and it's not a target, but yeah, maybe, it, maybe, it, maybe it is a target, I don't know. Well, if queens got traded, then the king is very well placed, yes. but the problem for white is we there's keep queens on the board. Heavy piece is still on the board, yeah. And I play rook to c8, and then there's pressure on e-file. Mm -hmm. And after the game, she told me she probably should have played knight e4 here, um, which goes into this end game where I get two rooks for oh. a queen. Yes. And uh, I think black is the only one with winning chances here because white's not even getting a pawn for it. Yeah. So yeah. instead of knight e4, she played knight a2. Two. And basically for the rest of the game, black was in control because uh, I have queen e5 here. And the knight is really misplaced on a2 because mm, it can't really come back to c3. And suddenly the king is looking a bit rocky there, isn't it, on e2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's queen b two ideas, mm -hmm. and the kind of the whole queen side for white yeah. is uh, is vulnerable here. So this is nice for you, isn't it? Okay. So a four. Yeah. A four, trying to save the queen side pawn because I was threatening queen b two, and eventually win the pawn. Yeah. Uh, problem yeah. for white is I still have queen b two after queen d two, queen b three, and pretty sure one of the pawns is falling. That's a very good white. move to meet, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. So she tried to take the rooks off, but. It was still impressive how much resistance she put up because I, and yeah, we, we trade pawn. down. Yeah, okay, that always happens. Knight takes c1 and yep. you take your pawn. Yep, so I'm up a pawn, um, but the, the rest of the game was a matter of end game technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just yeah, we could zoom through because I think a lot of these moves were just kind of consolidating. Um, I can do it too. <laughs> yeah. It's queen side. Uh, sure. So I, I, side of the I got my ideal set up on the, <laughs> the king side. Yeah. And uh, we were in a situation where she couldn't take the a7 pawn because I have queen c2. So white was a bit tied down. Um, oh, yeah. And then after king d2, this allowed me to play a5 because uh, after she takes, I have the in, in between move queen c3. And then I finally mm. achieve the past a pawn. And uh, yeah, yeah. Then if we go forward, That's some more kind of moves. Me. We were approaching move forty. Mm -hmm. um, Getting there. Yeah, slowly but surely, I repeated the position once. I played bishop e one, um, hitting f two. This forced the knight back to d three, and uh, and then I just moved back, just trying to get to move forty because I had a couple of minutes left. Uh, she played knight c5, and then, yeah, then rather than repeating again, I played bishop to b4, <laughs> and after knight d3, I found uh, the better square for my bishop on d6. And mm. I think in this position, white is very close to being in zigzag. It's very okay. difficult to find a move for white, yeah. because the queen is tied down to the knight, the king is tied down to the e-pawn, the knight is restricted by my bishop, and uh, also I'm threatening a4, so it's just really difficult for white to, to find a, an acceptable move. Um, she decided to trade queens, um, but then this locks into pretty simply winning endgame after takes takes, and decided to put my bishop on d4 to just dominate the knight. And... Yeah. Oh, wait, did this not happen? Oh, sorry, no, it didn't. Oh, king e2 she, happened. Yeah, she played king e2 first, bishop d4, then knight a4. But same situation. Right. And, uh, yeah, the, the rest of the game... The rest of it um, is uh, fairly straightforward, I guess. Once the knight is stuck, I can make my progress on the king side. King enters the game, f3, white can't really g5. stop the you start on playing on that side as well. Yeah, so king d3, put the bishop far away... And then after, what was it? Oh, she played e5 check. Like e5 Oops. check, yep. e5, king f5, takes, takes, and then. Knight c3 knight is c3. played. King h4. She's hoping for king f4. Oh. But I think king f4 is still winning. I, I was wondering about it during the game. Okay. If, well, that would uh, be fun. <laughs> I didn't want to make things too exciting. Okay. Um, 
it's an interesting calculation exercise. All right, okay. Instead of king f4, I played king h4, and then she, she resigned. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.